Hello everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, but it's really kind of a general video editing tutorial because we're going to talk about the best way to export videos both for Instagram posts and Instagram stories here in Adobe Premiere Pro, but the settings should roughly be the same whether you're using Final Cut or even probably Windows Movie Maker or just about any video editor out there. So if you're interested in having better, higher quality Instagram videos and Instagram stories, stick around and check this one out. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for all kinds of cool video editing tutorials that you just might like in the future as well. Let's jump in and start this thing right now. Ah, uh, well here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, which we're using as our video editor today, but really, like I mentioned in the open, the techniques and sizes and quality settings, well, they'll hold true for all types of video editing applications. So, let's start with the fast and easy Instagram story settings. First and foremost, here in Premiere, I'm going to create a new sequence by going File, New Sequence, and I'm going to choose the Digital SLR and then the 1080p flavor, and I'll stick with 30 frames per second uh, option here. I'll choose in the Settings tab at the top of this window in Premiere to further customize this thing. The size of an Instagram story at this particular moment in time is 1080 pixels, 1080 pixels wide, and 1920 pixels tall. Basically, a 1920 by 1080 HD video, but flipped on its side. We want to be pretty particular about the sizing because Instagram seems to be pretty strict about the sizing that it will allow in a story to the point where they will crop an image or a video and they don't give you the option to really zoom or push the video around. So it's important to get it right in the video file right out of the gate. I'll also give my sequence a name like Instagram story in here and maybe even choose to save a preset if you think you're going to be making a lot of Instagram stories with your own sort of non-phone camera shot videos. Basically, if you're using a camera other than your phone to shoot Instagram stories. Once we open this sequence, I'm going to drop some video in here and I'll scale it up to fill the frame. Now, side note, it can be a good idea to flip your camera on its side and film videos specifically for Instagram stories if you're really interested in going deep with your Instagram stories and creating videos just for use over there. There's no harm in flipping your camera on its side and filming that way. There might be some people that freak out about it, but you know what? It's your Instagram story, not theirs. So they can pound sand, right? I'm going to finish adjusting the size and position of my video, and now I'm ready to export it. Of course, you could add text, you could add some prompts to swipe up, or any other sounds or digital effects that you may want for your particular story. But here in Premiere Pro, I'm going to set an in and out point for this project. You'll see why that plays large in a second. See, Instagram lets you upload up to 15 second long videos to your stories. So we'll play things safe. And I'm going to set an in point at the very beginning of my video by moving the playhead back there and just hitting the letter I. That drops the in point. Then move to about the 10 second mark, let's say, here for this video clip. And I'll set the out point just by hitting the letter O. This in and out business, like I said, you'll understand how it all works in just a minute. So let's select this sequence by just making sure we've specifically selected it here in Premiere and we'll go to File, Export, Media. Now here in this dialog box, this is the stuff that's generally applicable in basically any video editor out there. We're going to work some magic here. So the first thing I like to do is set my source range drop down menu to sequence in out. This respects those in and out points that we just set. This is the stuff that Premiere is going to export and just ignore everything else on the timeline. We can have a bunch of junk old used shots, anything we don't like, it doesn't matter. Premiere is only going to focus on our in and out points at the moment. That's a nice little tip to know. So for most of what I'm uploading to YouTube, Twitter, or of course Instagram, I'm going to use the H.264 format. And the preset I'll begin with here in Premiere is this match source high bitrate option. But don't worry about all that junk because we're going to start making some changes here. Click the file name and you can choose where on your hard drive you want to save your file. And just make sure that you also have selected to export both audio and video. Now because of how we set up our sequence, many of the settings we would need to change are already exactly where we need them to be. But just know that if you do need to adjust the size of your video, you can do it here and get the video file that you need. Remember, that sizing stuff, it's pretty important when it comes to Instagram. Now here in Premiere, I like to tick on Render at Maximum Depth and also at the very bottom of this dialog box, tick on the Use Maximum Render Quality as, as well just to get the absolute best of the best quality on the export within whatever the bitrate that we choose. Now speaking of bitrate, let's work on that. Here under the bitrate settings, I like to choose CBR from the drop down menu. That stands for constant bitrate and if you're up for some really boring reading and the difference between variable and constant bit rates, feel free to Google it. But here, for our purposes, you can really do either of them. I just prefer the constant bit rate in this case. And that will ensure that we have the same level of quality across every single part of our video. 
Choosing the bitrate number is important because while setting a very high number gets you a very high quality upload, it also makes a much larger file and, and therefore when you upload it to something like Instagram, they're going to use their compression to attack your file and try to crunch it down and make it a smaller file. Instagram's resizing and compression, it kind of stinks. So let's use our better compression with our media encoder and choose a fairly high bitrate that we think can give us high quality and that will help make the compression of Instagram not so painful. The idea being, if we start high, we can let their compression attack our file, but it won't quite do as much damage because we've started with a much more high quality file. But do note that larger video files are more difficult to transfer, and even to upload them to Instagram, it can crash the app, especially depending on the phone and just a lot of things that go into it. So like anything, it's got its pros and cons, but find something that works for you. Basically, a higher bitrate is a better quality of video, but of course it's a larger file size and takes longer to export. I'm going to roll here with 6 megabits per second, 6 Mbps for the quality. Now, to transfer this video to your phone or mobile device, I like to use Apple's AirDrop, but if you're not working on a Mac or not transferring to an iPhone, that's totally fine. You can just throw the video up on something like Dropbox or Google Drive and get it transferred to your mobile device very quickly. And you're not going to have something like texting or something that's going to, you know, further compress your file and do damage to it before Instagram can even get its hands on it. So that's Instagram stories. That's how you can get a great quality Instagram story. Let's take a look at exporting video for actual video posts. So there's a whole lot that can go into video posts. We'll try to keep it nice and simple here to get you on your way. You can create a few different types of video posts on Instagram. You can go with the perfect square, one-to-one -one ratio. We've all seen it. We all love it. There's also the portrait orientation video, which is like four by five ratio. So it's a little bit taller than it is wide. And then there's also, of course, the wider landscape video. That's a 1.9 to 1 ratio, whatever that means. It basically just means it's very wide. But all that is much ado for nothing, because like I said, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to work with a 1 to 1 square video option. Now, it begins just like the story. Fresh sequence in Premiere. I'm going to use the settings to set a new video size, and that's going to be, it's going to sound crazy, but we're going to go with 640 by 640, because that is the native size that Instagram supports, at least at this point in time. This is not a still image. Still images, I believe, are 1080 by 1080, but video is 640 by 640. Tiny little 640p. Maybe that'll change at some point in the future, hopefully. But that's the size of video on Instagram now. So our fetching and complaining isn't going to do much for us now, is it? But I know what you're thinking. If I make a bigger video, won't I get better quality? Just like with our bitrate, when Instagram has to crunch it down, I'll just get a better quality video. Well, see, the actual physical size of the video doesn't quite work the same way as the megabit per second deal. Instagram uses their sort of cheap black market quality video resizer to just force that 1080p video down to a 640 by 640 size. But see, here with Premiere Pro, we've got a Ferrari. And I don't know about you, but when you've got a Ferrari, you use it. I'd rather be the one doing the resizing of my video and making sure I get the most beautiful image based upon the constraints that Instagram is sort of enforcing upon me. I don't want to let Instagram do all that resizing because then I know they're going to be damaging my video far, far more than I would be by resizing it here in Premiere. So I'm going to give this sequence a name like Square Instagram or Instagram Square, whatever. I'll go with 29.97 uh, FPS. It's basically 30 frames per second. And 30 frames per second, by the way, that's the max frame rate on Instagram. Again, right now at this moment in time. And we're going to create this sequence. I'll drag in some video, do the resizing and scaling and all just the editing stuff. You can do whatever you want when it comes to that. And once I have all that stuff, once again, I'm going to set my in and out points. Now, for Instagram posts, you can have up to a 60-second video, again, at this point in time. I'm going to then use the hotkey. This is for Premiere Pro. Hotkey, Command or Control M. It's just going to start that same export process. Get me back to that export dialog box. And again, we're going to use the H.264 option and the match source high bit rate, just like we did before. You can adjust the size down if need be right here. Uh, but if you set it in the sequence like I did, 640 by 640 will be the settings that are already filled in here. As we did before, I'm going to tick on render at maximum depth and also down at the bottom of the panel or this dialog box, I should say, I'm going to tick on use maximum render quality as well. And then finally, under bitrate settings, once more, I'm going to roll with the CBR, that constant bitrate, and I'm going to set the bitrate to something like 5 megabits per second. We went with 6 before, 5, 6, I find that works the best. Again, we're not offering up a, a massive amount of information, we're not going hog wild with it, but we're also not crushing our file into oblivion either. Basically, the standard that I've heard is good is your finished file should be about 40 megabits, 40 MB for a 60 second video. Now, this is a 30 second video that we're exporting, so it should be coming in around 20 MB. 
So I can adjust my megabits per second. If it's way lower than that, maybe I'll push my megabit rate up to, or my bit rate, I should say, I'll push that up to about 10 megabits per second, whatever it takes to get to around 20 megabits per second. That's the number that I've heard. It seems to work pretty well for me. So that's what I'm going to stick with here for this video. So at this point, of course, you can go ahead, export the video like you normally would, and you're good to go. And like I said before, getting the video over to your mobile device for upload to Instagram, it's as easy as using AirDrop for the Mac to iPhone, uh, or just upload it to Google Drive, Dropbox. They work like a charm. It's fast, it's easy, and with this technique, you're going to get great looking videos that will live on and on and on on Instagram. And that's going to be it for this one, folks. If you do enjoy Instagram, maybe you're here because you do, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. My handle is at tutvid. I'd love to see you over there. Hit me with a DM or tag me in a post or whatever you like. I, I like to interact over there. Uh, so for talking about Instagram posts, Instagram stories, and sizing and quality in H.26, what? And all the stuff we covered in this video. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.